Hello students. Today we will be discussing another important application of Gauss theorem. So we have to calculate the electric field due to an infinitely long straight current carrying charge to air. So from the figure you can see that we have taken a thin infinitely long straight current carrying conducting wire that have a uniform line charge density lambda. Fine. So usually the unit of linear charge density is coulomb meter inverse since it is charged by length so charge has unit coulomb and length has unit meter so linear charge density has unit lambda so we have taken a thin infinitely long straight wire of line charge density lambda so by the symmetry the electric field of the line charge is directed radially outwards and its magnitude is same at all points in keeping equal distance from the line charge. So to calculate the electric field at a distance r from the line charge, we have to choose a cylindrical Gaussian surface of radius r and length l and with its axis along the line charge. So from the figure you can see uh, the cylinder has curved surface S2 and flat circular ends at S3 and S1. So obviously here DS2 is parallel to electric field and DS1 is perpendicular to electric field as well as DS3 is perpendicular to electric field. So the angle between DS3 and E will be 90 degree angle between ds1 and e will be again 90 degree and angle between ds2 and e will be 0 degree so we can write the total electric flux is the closed surface integral of e vector into ds vector so since we have taken infinitely long straight wire and we have divided this long straight wire into three parts s1 s2 s3 so means the total surface integral of EDS is the sum of all three regions total electric flux means at S1 surface integration E dot DS1 as S2 surface integration E dot DS2 as S3 surface integration E dot DS3. So if you do the sum of these three you will get the total flux over this curve surface. Fine. So now E dot DS1 is in vector form so we know that from the basic fundamental of vector that a dot b is a v cos theta so obviously we can write e ds1 cos 90 degree e ds2 cos 0 degree e ds3 cos 90 degree so cos 90 is 0 means for s3 and s1 the contribution of flux is 0 only the contribution s2 will present because cos 0 is 1 so means E integration ds1 e integration ds2 will be total flux now integration ds2 will be s2 so s2 is the area of the curved surface since we have taken the cylindrical surface area of curved surface cylinder we know 2 pi rl so flux we can write electric field into 2 pi rl now the surface or line charge density lambda is equal to charge by length q by l will be lambda so we can write q is equal to lambda into l so according to Gauss theorem we know that total flux is q by epsilon 0 so now in terms in place of flux we have q by epsilon 0 again flux we got e into 2 pi rl so e into 2 pi rl is equal to q by epsilon 0 in place of q just simply put the value lambda l so e into 2 pi rl is equal to lambda l by epsilon 0 in both sides L will be cancelled out. So E into 2 pi R will be lambda by epsilon 0. So E will get lambda by 2 pi epsilon 0 into R. Means from this expression we can conclude that the electric field of a line charge is inversely proportional to the distance from the line charge. So this is one important application of Gauss theorem through which we can calculate the electric field due to an infinitely long straight current carrying charge to air. Thank you.